Welcome to Kitchen 101, where you learn how to think like a chef. How to cook, not what to cook. Today we'll be discussing the history of corn. So grab yourself a pen, paper, and a tub of butter, because I'm Professor Kitchen, and class is in session. Before we start, if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and comment down below. It really does help our channel reach others who will enjoy it as much as you do. Also, I have included links to a lot more information than I could cram in this short video down in the description box. Now, let's get corn. When you sit down in your movie theater seat with a huge tub of popcorn, you'll be enjoying one of the oldest cultivated grains in history. Born in Mesoamerica long before any Europeans ever showed up, Corn was domesticated and transformed from a simple grass into the juicy, delicious food we enjoy today by Native Americans. More corn is produced today than either wheat or rice. Scientists believe that modern-day corn, or maize, can trace its roots back to the Tezanite family of grasses. The peoples of that long-ago time started planting the seeds of the plants that they liked the best. Over the generations, the cob would have gotten larger and stronger to support the more and more kernels the farmers were trying to encourage to grow. Corn modification is still very much an ongoing thing. For instance, James L. Reed developed the Reed's Yellow Dip variety in the 1860s. In the early 1900s, many varieties were developed due to the rapidly advancing scientific knowledge of the time. The universities got involved in the mid-1900s, and many different modern hybrids were created from the breeding programs. Today, there are many not-for-profit and for-profit businesses and groups that are dedicated to investigating and preserving corn. As you can see, there isn't just one type of corn. In fact, there are four groups of different types of corn. They are field corn, sweet corn, popcorn, and ornamental corn. Each of these groups have many different types of corn in them. All of these types of corn have several things in common. They are all stalks. That means that there are no limbs, but that it grows straight up. The stalk is divided into sections called internodes that are about seven inches long. On average, there are about 20 internodes per plant. These internodes are connected at a joint called a node. It is from these nodes that the leaves grow. These leaves can be up to four inches wide and four feet in length. They all have both male and female reproductive organs. The male flowers are at the top of the plant and look like a tassel. When it gets ready, it just releases its pollen and lets the wind do the rest. Fly, my pretty one, fly. Wee! The sky is your playground. The female flowers grow on the leaf stems near the middle of the stalk, and from them, corn ears grow. There can be several corn ears per plant, but most only have one. Each of the ears pieces of silk actually each of the ears pieces of silk is actually a stigma from the flower. The job of the silk is to capture the pollen from a male plant and produce a kernel on the cob. If a piece of silk is not fertilized, then a kernel won't grow there. So there can be more pieces of silk than there are kernels of corn, but not more kernels than there are pieces of silk. Corn plants love warm weather but have shallow roots. The combination of these two means that the corn is very susceptible to drought. As a result, it is normally only grown in places that have a good deal of rainfall, like coastland areas. Corn, while nutritious, is dangerous as a main source of nutrition because it doesn't contain vitamin B3, also called niacin. A deficiency in niacin, called pellagra, can cause sores, inflammation, diarrhea, and even dementia. Pellagra was a big problem before World War II. Today in the U.S., cornmeal and wheat flour are enriched with niacin to prevent pellagra. Of the four different groups of corn we normally eat, of the four different groups of corn we normally only eat sweet corn and popcorn. Ornamental corn is edible, but mostly prized for its beauty. Field corn is also edible, but we normally feed it to animals or make ethanol out of it. Some foods like corn syrup and corn starch are made from field corn. Though. Also, some types of whiskey are made from field corn. Young sweet corn can be eaten raw because it is nice and sweet. Once it starts to mature, much of that sugar turns to starch, and it isn't as tasty raw. For those ears, you need to cook it just a bit. You can cook ears of corn in their husk if you like. Most people prefer to remove the husk and silk before cooking, as it makes for a cleaner eating experience. Also, if you're going to cook the corn 
on a grill or flat top, getting a bit of char on the kernels is really tasty. One of the things the ancient Mesoamerican society and the U.S. southern states have in common is they both would have been in big trouble with our corn. Even today we use corn in so many different ways in our culture and diet. The next time you're enjoying a crisp taco, some creamy grits, a bowl of cornflakes, or your favorite dip on a corn chip, be thankful for the long road the humble corn ear has traveled to make it what it is today. Thank you for coming to class today. I hope you have a great week. God bless. Class, dismissed.